Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about the CSS display property, which is responsible for how an element appears on the page. Elements can be block, inline, or inline block, and inline block exhibits a mixture of the behaviors of block and inline elements, and I'll explain which behaviors those are in a few minutes. We can also set the display to flex or grid, which sets a parent element to be a block level flex or grid container. There are also inline flex and inline grid display types too. And the main effect of these display types is on the children of the container the display property is applied to. They set the rules by which child elements will lay out. But in this video, we'll mainly concentrate on the display behaviors of block, inline, and inline block elements. And we'll also look at what replaced elements are and why we can do things to them that we can't do to normal non-replaced elements. We have an example code pen here, and the link to this is in the description below. We've got the starting and uh, ending files, and we're gonna use this as a sandbox to demonstrate the various display property values. We've got a heading, a paragraph, and a couple of divs, which are elements that have display block applied to them by default by the browser. The paragraph contains a nested link, which is an inline element. Then we have these three images and these buttons, and the buttons are actually A anchor tags styled to appear as buttons. Both the images and the buttons are inside of section elements. So what we'll do is discuss the different display behaviors of these elements, and then we'll mess around with them and change the way they behave. Some elements like headings and divisions, including semantic division elements like footer, header, and section are meant to divide a particular section of the page that is going to stand alone. Others, like images and links, sit within these blocks in line with each other and other content. So the browser sets defaults that are appropriate for these elements, but that doesn't stop us from using the display property to override those defaults. Elements with display block, like our paragraph and divs, and I can set that to them explicitly occupy the horizontal space of their container, stretching the full width available to them. The height is determined by what their content needs. Therefore, they block out an entire section of the page to themselves, always starting on a new line and forcing following content below. We see that in action with this first paragraph. It's pushing the div below onto a new line, and in turn, the div is pushing the span that follows it below. This second div, which follows the span, wants to occupy its own line, so pushes the span above it. Block elements can accept height and width properties, and these allow us to control size. Uh, the block elements still retain their position on a new line, but are a different size. If we change display from block to inline, our paragraph and divs lose their claim to their own line and now sit in line next to each other and next to the span, which is an inline element by default. We also have images and this link that are inline by default. Inline elements do not push other content above or below to occupy a new line. Instead, they're quite happy to sit within the flow of content and in line with other elements. We also see how the elements have now resized exactly for the content and no bigger. Inline elements only occupy the horizontal and vertical space that their content needs, and they are now completely ignoring the height and width properties. We also see that moving and shifting the window around makes the text wrap. If we change div and p to inline block, we see totally different behavior. This display type blends some of the behaviors from block and inline display types. Inline in that the elements now don't occupy their own line and sit next to other inline and inline block elements, but block in that the height and width properties can now be used. So if you want to set height and width on an element that behaves like an inline element, then use inline block. You will notice that the content of inline blocks doesn't wrap. Instead, when the element runs out of room, it is going to stack as a column of boxes. If I set the span to block, what might happen? Well, it's going to block out the full width of its container, taking up its own line and pushing preceding elements above and elements that follow below. As an inline block, we lose the word wrap and can now set size with the height and width properties. 
It's the same with this link. Currently, this is an inline element, so height and width have no effect. If we set that to inline block, and they, of course, then come into play. I'll demonstrate another use of inline block using these uh, buttons at the bottom. Currently, they are displayed in line, which is typically how we might actually want these buttons to display on a call to action or something like that. Firstly, to achieve this button effect, some padding has been applied to the buttons, and this has no effect on the height of the parent element, which we see here with this black border. Secondly, we see that on small screens, we're seeing this weird wrapping behavior. The solution to solve these issues is to use inline block. And when we apply that, we see that the buttons now stack quite nicely when space is at a premium. Second, the parent element's height is now affected by the padding and adjusts to accommodate the inline block buttons. Lastly, let's take a look at these images. They're nested inside this section element, which has a image container class. And in the CSS, this responds to a display flex value. Display flex sets the layout conditions for child elements within the container rather than outside it. So it's quite different to the other display elements that we've seen. To the other elements outside though, this is a block level element as far as they are concerned. And to have this uh, section behave like an inline element on the outside, but a flex container inside, we can instead use display inline block. But that's as much as I'm going to explain display flex here really. We use it with the Flexbox model and we'll have a host of videos purely covering that in detail. So that's where you should go to learn about Flexbox. But for now, we're just gonna use it to set up this section element to lay out the images in this way. We're going to be laying them out in a row, but we could also easily switch them to a column-based layout with Flexbox or we could do something like uh, reverse the order of the images and so on. But as I say, watch the Flexbox videos to get Flexbox down fully and in detail. What we're actually concentrating on here is the images themselves. So an image automatically has a display value of inline, yet oddly, we can go and set height and width properties on them, which actually work. This shouldn't be happening. We've seen that we can't do that to this span or to this link when they are set to display in line. The reason we can do it to the image is because this is what CSS calls a replaced element. And MDN says that replaced elements are external objects whose content is not affected by the document styles. And that is certainly true of images. The W3C CSS specs say that inline replaced elements like image are exactly the same as inline block elements, which explains why we can use height and width properties on them. So setting inline or inline block makes absolutely no difference to images and the same goes for iframes for video elements and embed elements which are all considered replaced elements as well okay so i think we'll stop here this covers the display property and some of the quirks and behaviors of the various values that it can have elements with display block occupy the horizontal space of their container stretching the full width available to them the height is determined by their content but they can accept height and width properties which allow us to manipulate their size they always occupy a new line and force other elements below or above them Inline elements do not need their own line and sit happily next to other inline and inline block elements. The size is determined purely by their content and they cannot be resized by height and width properties unless they are replaced elements like images or iframes. In this case, inline replaced elements are indistinguishable from inline block elements. Elements with display inline block mix behaviors of the other two display types that we've seen. Inline in that they don't occupy their own line and sit next to other inline and inline block elements, but block in that the height and width properties can be used. Okay guys, so that's the CSS display property. Thank you for watching, I do appreciate your time. In the next video, we're going to be looking at CSS positioning and all of the weird and wonderful ways that positioning has been done traditionally before we had things like Flexbox and Grid to help us laying our pages out. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video and check some of the other videos out on the channel and 
Also check us out on social media and the links are below in your description along with all of the resources and some useful links that um, will help you when watching this video. So thanks again and I'll see you in the next one.